Have you heard Jesus is coming back for his bride? And the spirit and the bride say, come. Read Revelation 22, 17. And who's the bride? Read Ephesians 5, 27. Visit the website now. And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Mail correspondence to And the spirit and the bride say, come. P.O. Box 210, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30086. Or send an email to info at And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Praise God, praise God, praise God, and welcome once again to our broadcast today. We thank the Lord for this opportunity, and we thank you for tuning in and being with us. I'm your broadcast announcer, Elder David Morris, and our broadcast is, and the Spirit and the Bride say come. We always like to begin our broadcast with a prayer. Ask the Lord to bless the broadcast that it might be a blessing to someone, that they may be healed, saved, and delivered. Would you bow your heads with us? Father God, we thank you today for this opportunity that you presented to us to come before your people. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that this broadcast be a blessing to someone that may be delivered, set free. We believe it, Lord, right now. We place all things in your hands. In the name of Jesus, for Christ's sake, we pray. Amen, and thank you, Jesus. Well, today we are right back on our same subject, and that is the Bride of Christ. On our last broadcast, we reverence the Lord and we spoke on the word that Jesus is on his way back for his bride. Now that's a fact. If you read the Bible in the book of Revelation, it tells you that he's coming back for his bride. Not a fiance, not a girlfriend, and certainly not a social partner, but he's coming back actually for a wife. Now, today our announcement is, here comes the bride. Now that is a very familiar salutation indeed. I'm sure no one would argue that fact. But you know, I'm wondering whether or not we will be caught off guard, surprised, absolutely spellbound to see who shows up as the bride. Have you ever thought about that? Well, let's see what Revelation tells us. Revelation, the 19th chapter, and the seventh verse. Now we always encourage you to bring your Bibles to our broadcast so you can follow us in the Word of God. We always encourage that fact. So if you have your Bible, turn to Revelation, the 19th chapter, and the seventh verse. And it reads, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife, note that, his wife has made herself ready. Now let me read that again in case you didn't get it that time. That's Revelation 19 and seven. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. Now that's the scripture, my friend. I don't know where all of the hearsay come from, but we just read this passage right out of the Bible. And the first thing we have to look into the Bible says in this scripture right here, 
it says that we should rejoice for the marriage of the Lamb is come. Well, who is the Lamb? That's the very first thing we need to establish. It says the Lamb of God. Now, there's many interpretations out today just who this scripture is talking about. But let's find out what the scripture says, who the Lamb of God is. And we can go to the book of St. John, the first chapter and the 29th verse. That's St. John 1 and 29. And this is how it reads. Follow me in your Bible. The next day John sees Jesus, oh, thank you. Thank you for the word. Coming unto him and says, this is what John said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. My friend, that's the scripture explaining to us plainly who the Lamb of God is. And it's verified again in that same chapter with the 36th verse. Now it reads, John is talking about John also. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he says, John said, Behold the Lamb of God. My friend, Jesus is the Lamb of God. That's on. Hallelujah. That's on his way back. I get excited. I get excited when I think that Jesus is on his way back for his bride. We've just read who the Lamb of God is. That's Jesus Christ. He's coming back. Now, who's he coming back for? Not a fiancé. Oh, no. You see, a fiancé is someone that's engaged to be married. That period will be over, according to the scripture, when Jesus comes back for his bride. He will not be looking for a fiancé. Well, let's go to the scripture and get a witness. If you turn your Bible to Matthew, the twenty. Sixth chapter and the sixth verse. I'm sorry, Matthew the twenty fifth chapter and the and the sixth verse. That's it. Matthew twenty five and six. Turn to it in your Bible and let's read what it says. Matthew twenty five and six. And at midnight. There was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your all, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Now listen to this. And I'm down to the 10th verse now. I started with the 6th and we're down to the 10th verse. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, Jesus came, and they that were ready we in with him to the marriage. There it is again, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the door was shut. Now the 11th verse said, And afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But the 12th verse said, He answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. You see, my friends, when Jesus comes back for his bride, 
She's not looking for a fiance. Because a fiance is preparing to be the bride. The door will be shut if the bride is not ready. Oh, glory. We just read the scripture to you. You just heard me read from the Bible. She's not looking for fiance. Well, how about a girlfriend? Well, a girlfriend points to where the relationship is heading. That's the definition of a girlfriend. It's heading somewhere. My friend, when Jesus comes back, it's not heading anywhere. It must be there right then. The bride must be ready to go with him or she's left behind. So a girlfriend will not do. She's not looking for a girlfriend. Well, one more example. A social partner. A social partner. Now that's an area that had me for a long time. I look back before I came to myself. Not perfect now. A long ways from it. But I came to myself and I said, am I having a relationship with the Lord on a social level? What is the definition of a social partner? A social partner is someone that enjoys friendly activities. They go to the movies, they go to dinner together, they go to a play, a ball game. They enjoy each other's social activities, but there is no serious commitment. And that's what had me for a long time. I cannot condemn anybody else or judge anybody, but I can certainly talk about my life. Oh yes, I attended, glory to God, I attended church just about every Sunday. I played the organ for the last 50 years, up and down, all around. But when I got up, there was no serious commitment many times. I was a social partner. Hallelujah. But my friend, Jesus is not looking for a social partner. He's looking for a bride. Totally committed unto him. That's the only thing that he's going to accept. He's not going to accept any other relationship. It must be fully committed according to Revelation 19 and 7 Jesus is looking for a wife he's looking for a bride but who just for a few minutes who is she we know she's going to be a bride we know she's going to be his wife but who is she well we just read the scripture, Revelation 19 and 7. And we know that she will be introduced at the marriage supper of the Lamb. She'll be brought forth at the marriage supper of the Lamb and introduced to the public. Scripture just noted that fact. Well, if she's going to be introduced, what does that mean? If you go to the dictionary and look up the word introduce, it means to present. Introduce means to present. He's going to present her at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So we get a witness on this in the book of Ephesians. 
the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and the 27th verse. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians 5 and 27. He's going to introduce her at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Introduce means to present. Listen to what Ephesians 5 and 27 said. That he, talking about Jesus, might present it to himself a glorious church. My Lord. He's going to present the church to himself. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. There it is, my friend. People have called the bride everything that you can name. But Jesus is not going to present everything. He's going to present the church unto himself. And listen at how he describes her. Not having spot, oh Lord, glory to God, a wrinkle. In other words, his bride is true. Let me let that sink in. Did you hear me? His bride is true without any such thing, having not a spot or wrinkle. That gown spiritually, that spirit within his bride is without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. That's what he's looking for. That's what he's looking for. So is the church. According to the scripture in Ephesians 5 and 27. It's the church. Now, there are many opinions, interpretations, and point of views concerning the bride of Christ. We're not here to debate. The Bible says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Now that's found in Revel, I'm sorry, in Romans, the 14th chapter and the fifth verse. You can look that up. Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. You have to make up your own mind whether you're going to be the bride of Christ or you're going to be a fiance, a girlfriend, a social worker. But let me say this right here. It's tight, but it's right. There is no room for manipulation. We either are accepted as his bride. That means a fully, hallelujah, commitment to the Lord. No exceptions, no excuses. Our lives have to be where our talk is. We're not here to debate. We just take the word of God at face value. Just like it said, every man be persuaded by his own mind. But you know, I don't believe that the bride of Christ is made out of wood and nails, rocks and stones, no matter how shiny it might be. I don't believe that. But you have to make up your own mind on that. I don't believe it. I don't believe Jesus left heaven 
for a building that's sitting on the top of a hill. I don't believe that. I don't believe he came down here and went through what he went through for a building. I don't believe that. I don't believe that he suffered the pain and the agony. Do you know what they put him through? You, you probably do. You've read it. They judged him falsely. They beat him until the Bible said he didn't resemble a man. They took a cat and nine tail. Hallelujah. Hmm. Which is a strap that's intertwined with Y. And sometimes they put seashell that when they hit him, it tore the skin off of his body. 40 lashes. He said minus one. But he didn't say a mumbling word. Then they took him to Golgotha, Calvary, and they hung him, nailed nails in his hands, in his feet, hung him in a way where he couldn't breathe. The Romans was, I don't know what to say, they was experienced in torture. They hung him where he couldn't breathe. And then they pierced him in the side. But he didn't say a word except, Father, forgive them, for they know not what he do. And he went through that. He left heaven just for a building, just for silver and gold that he had already before he left. L let, let me explain one thing. Do you know what they're doing in heaven with gold? <clears throat> If you don't turn to Romans, I'm sorry, Revelation 21 and 21. This is what they're doing in heaven with gold. Something that a lot of people believe is the bride of Christ. Something that we steal, kill, and scheme for. This is what they're doing. We'll go. This is what heaven value gold as. Revelation 21 and 21. Listen to this. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was one pearl. Now, and the streets of the city was pure gold. My friend, they're walking on gold in heaven. Something that we will go to the farthest streams and give up just about everything to possess. They're walking on it in heaven. Glory. <clears throat> Read your Bible and you'll see the mysteries of his word. It's right here in the Bible. They're using gold for what we use asphalt for. How much would you get if you got a piece of asphalt and took it to the bank? How much would you get? You would probably get a ride downtown to the eighth floor. Certainly, you will be asked to leave. Heaven is walking on it. My friend, Jesus is coming back for a bride. He's coming back for his church. We've just proved that through the word of God. 
Not a material thing. He had all of that in heaven when he left. Why would he come down here and have to die for it? Jesus is coming back for his bride. He's coming back for a wife. The first thing he's going to look for is his bride. Is she going to, will she be ready? When he comes, here comes the bride. She's on her way to the marriage supper of the Lamb over in the new Jerusalem. We always try our best to give those that desire to come to the Lord on our broadcast. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. That's why he died. That's why he's coming back. We always try to give those that desire an opportunity to come. So if you, after hearing this word, you've decided to make heaven your home, you're going to be the bride of Christ. Pray with me. If you desire to be saved, very simple. Will you bow your heads, Father God? We pray that you would look on us right now. In your word, you say, repent and be converted. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us from our sins and our trespasses that we've trespassed against you. And we ask you, O oh Lord, to save us in the name of Jesus. Then the Bible says, if you believe that God have raised Jesus from the dead, then you shall be saved. My friend, if you prayed that prayer, that's all it is. That's all to it. You were sincere from the heart. He heard you. It's time to get ready to meet the groom. He's on his way back. We thank you for tuning in and being with us today on our broadcast Amen, and thank you, Jesus. We would like to invite you to visit us on our website. You can pull it up by punching in www. and the spirit and the bride say come dot org, and there you'll find the links to our various social networks, our Facebook. If you were not able to catch this broadcast today, we always place the videos on Facebook for future viewing, viewing, I'm sorry. So take a look at it. You'll find our YouTube and also our Instagram. You'll see how we travel. We, that's our purpose. We go from city to city, northeast, south, and west with our mobile unit, uh, bride mobile unit. And all we do is announce, announce that Jesus is coming back for his bride. So go to it and take a look at it. And I'm sure that you will be blessed. So we always leave the air with these words. Come on, let us go to the new Jerusalem. And we live in the blessed hope that we'll meet at the marriage supper of the Lamb. God bless you.
Spirit 